This video for Math 94 covers examples from homework number 7, sections 9.4 and 9.5. These problems are like problems 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on the homework, and their focus is on solving quadratic equations using complex numbers. Okay, so here's a problem that you might be familiar with. Use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. You might recall the quadratic formula if you have your equation in the form, quadratic equation in the form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then the solutions are given by the quadratic formula, which is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is equal to one, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 6. So, let's just plug those in. Minus 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, minus 4, times 1, times 6, okay? All over 2 times 1. Okay, let's simplify this up. Minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus, 4 times 1 is 4 times 6 is 24, over 2. Hmm. Well, keep going. x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 over 2. Now, on the previous assignment, you might have written this down, or you might have written no real solution. Now that you know complex numbers, though, you know how to deal with this square root of negative 20. So you might say that that's minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 5 times negative 1 over 2. So that's minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 square root of 5 i over 2. Factoring a 2 out of the top, you might notice that this is minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 5i over 2. The 2's will divide out. And your final solution is minus 1 plus or minus square root of 5i. Now remember, this represents two numbers. x equals minus 1 plus the square root of 5i and x equals minus 1 minus the square root of 5i. Notice these two solutions are complex and notice also that the only difference is the sign in the middle, so that means they're complex conjugates. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's go back to the original problem. x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals 0. Now that we have complex numbers, we can solve this and we can say that the solution is these complex numbers. What does that mean in terms of a graph? Well, I'm going to take out my calculator, and I'm going to help you graph this. So I'm going to turn my calculator on, and I'm going to hit y equals. And I'm going to clear out what I've got there, and I'm going to put in x squared plus 2x plus 6. Remember to use this button, the x button here, x t theta n for x. Now, I need to set a window, so I might as well uh, just use a standard window. So I'm going to hit zoom and number 6, go down to number 6, which is the standard. And there is my graph. Now, you'll notice this graph does not cross the x-axis. So this graph, which is the function y equals x squared plus 2x plus 6, if y equals 0, which is the x-axis, this has no solution. So this is what this means when you have two complex conjugate solutions. Now, as you know, you don't always have complex conjugate solutions. So let's use the quadratic formula to solve this one. Why don't you stop the video and take a moment and try to do this yourself? We start the video when you are ready. Okay, in this case, a equals 5 b equals 9, c equals negative 2. So x equals minus b 
plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's going to be minus 9 plus or minus the square root of 9 squared, which is 81, minus 4 times 5 times 2, all over 2 times 5. That's going to give me minus 9 plus or minus the square root of 81. Well, let's try this. 4 times 5 is 20, times 2, let's see, that's 40, right? Okay, so we have, oh, and that's, I'm sorry, that's a negative 2, so that should be plus 40, yep, I'm sorry about that, so negative 2 here, and that should be plus 40, but let's keep going, minus 9, plus or minus the square root, what's this going to be? This is 81 plus 40, which is 121, oh, and 121 is a perfect square, so that's going to be minus 9 plus or minus 11 over 10. So that gives you that x equals 9 minus 9 plus 11 over 10, which, oh, let's see, minus 9 plus 11 is 2 over 10, which is 1 fifth, or x equals minus 9 minus 11 over 10, which is minus 20 over 10, which is negative 2. So here we have two real number solutions. Now, if I were to draw a graph of this function, and let's just go back to my calculator, and instead I'm going to put in here 5x squared plus 9x minus 2, and I'll go back and just graph that on that standard window I have. You'll notice that my two x-intercepts are minus 2 and 1 fifth. So in this case, we have two x-intercepts and we have two real solutions. The other alternative you can get is a, like a problem like this. Let's use the quadratic formula to solve this one. Again, if you need practice, you might pause the video now and then come back to it when you are finished. Okay, a equals 8, b equals 4, c equals 1. Let's give this a shot. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's minus 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 8. Okay, times 1, right? And this is going to be 2 times 8. Okay, we got that all in there. So this ends up being minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 32 over 16. Minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 32 is negative 16 over 16. Ah, we seem to have complex numbers again, complex conjugates. Square root of 16 by now you know is 4i. If we factor a 4 out of the top, we end up with this. So in this case, we have two complex conjugate roots. And again, this graph would have no x-intercept. If we wanted to check that, let's come back here. 8x squared plus 4x plus 1. Graph that on my standard window. And you can see, although it gets close, it doesn't cross the x-axis. Now, in the quadratic formula, this part of the quadratic formula has a special name. b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. And the discriminant can tell you the nature of your roots or your zeros of your quadratic equation. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, 
that means there's two real solutions. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then there's one real solution, and that's a double root. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, then that means you have two complex conjugate. solutions. Okay? So that's a little bit about the discriminant. Let's try this problem. Uh, see if you can do this problem. Uh, start the video again when you are ready. Okay, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. A is 1, B is negative 8, and C is 32. Now, a quick look at this using the discriminant b squared minus 4ac will tell me minus 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 32. Well, minus 8 squared is 64. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 32, well, that's 128. So you can see this is negative. So this is going to have two complex conjugate solutions. Let's do that. Minus b, which would be opposite of negative 8, which is 8, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, that's 64 minus 128, over 2 times a, which is just 2. 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 64 over 2. Square root of negative 64 is 8i. And this is 4 plus or minus 4i. So as you can see, I have two complex conjugate solutions, and those are both of my solutions. You might be asked to list them separately in WebAssign, so make sure you understand that those are the same as writing it this way, 4i and 4i there. Okay. So let's do another problem here. Find all solutions, real or complex, for this one. Now, this is not a quadratic equation. I cannot use the quadratic formula. But you might remember from a previous section this little formula called the difference of cubes. Difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in our case, we have x cubed minus 3 cubed. So that's going to be x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus b squared, in this case would be 3 squared, or 9. And that has to equal 0. From the zero product property, we know that either x minus 3 equals 0, or x squared plus 3x plus 9 equals 0. Now, the x minus 3 equals 0 just gives you x equals 3. That's great. The x squared plus 3x plus 9 equals 0. Using the quadratic formula, that's the opposite of 3, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, or 9, minus 4 times 1 times 9, which is 36, over 2 times 1. So x equals minus 3, plus or minus the square root of 9, minus 36 is going to be, let's see, that's minus 27 over 2. So x equals minus 3 plus or minus, and this ends up being 3 times the square root of 3i over 2. So in this equation, we have one real solution and two complex conjugate solutions. One last problem for you to try. Let's take a look at this one. So a equals 2 b equals negative 3, and c equals 3. So x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times 2 times 3, all over 2 times 2. 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared, which is 9. Minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 
So that's another complex solution there, okay? So this is 3 plus or minus, let's see, 9 minus 24, what would that be? I believe that's going to be minus 15 over 4. So this ends up being 3 plus or minus square root of 15i over 4, and we have two complex conjugate solutions. I hope you have found this video useful.